Good day, I'm Charles Rose, Director of the Center for Excellence and Advocacy at Stetson University College of Law. We're about to watch an excerpt from a video deposition of Johnny Broadsides, a young man who witnessed the tragic death of two children in an accident that forms the basis for the case file Washington v. Hartwell. Now, I can only give you a taste of this video clip because YouTube only allows us to give you 10 minutes, so it'll fade in and out a couple of times. If you're interested in the lessons that are contained within this clip, if you're excited about learning advocacy, or if you think this might be something that you'd like to consider as either a career or a training opportunity, give me a call down here at Stetson College of Law. You can find me on the web. I'd be happy to talk to you about some of the things that are possible when you look at trial advocacy as a true discipline. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the depot. Mr. Broadsides, we're here today to take a deposition. Do you understand what that means? Uh, no, I don't know what that okay. means. I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'm going to need you to give me answers. Okay. Can uh, we agree that uh, if you don't understand my question, you'll let me know? Yes, I will. And if uh, if you think the question is confusing, you'll let me know? Oh, yes, I will. And uh, otherwise, if you do understand the question, you'll answer it? Uh, yes, I certainly will. Okay. Now, the court reporter put you on the oath uh, a few moments ago. You understand that that oath means you need to be truthful? Uh, yes, yes, sir, I understand that. What, what does an oath mean to you? Um, it just means that you swear that everything you're going to say is going to be the truth, and if you lie about anything, you're going to get in trouble for it. Have you ever have you ever taken an oath before? No, I haven't. So this is the first time you've taken an oath? This is. Okay. And uh, we can agree that, uh, that you'll be truthful today. Oh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Well, now... In order for an answer to be truthful, it needs to be complete, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And, and you promise me that you'll give complete answers? I promise to do that. And if I miss some portion, you'll, you'll let me know? Uh, yes, I will. Okay. And, I'll, and I promise to stop and give you that opportunity to explain anything you need to explain. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Now, I have a few preliminary questions that I need to ask you. They're not designed to embarrass you, but just to make certain that this deposition is a proper deposition so that we don't have to do it again. Okay. I don't wish to inquire into your medical history itself, but I do need to know if you're taking any medications that might affect your ability to complete this deposition today. Uh, I don't think so. I took some NyQuil last night because I wasn't feeling well. But NyQuil? I don't think, yeah. How long ago was it that you took the NyQuil? I went to bed last night around about 9 o'clock. About say. 9 o'clock? Did you take any this morning? No, nothing this morning. And have you had anything else uh, of an alcoholic? No. no drink? Nothing at all. Nothing at all? And not taking any controlled substances right No, now. no, no. Okay, and no prescription medication? No prescription, other than the NyQuil I had last Other than the NyQuil you had last night. Right. All right, sir. And um, are you feeling okay today? Yeah, I feel, feel great. Okay. Now, through the course of this deposition, if we need to stop for some reason, uh, I'm happy to do that. I just need you to let me know. Okay, no problem. You'll let me know? Yes, I will. Okay. I, I do have one request, though. If we stop, uh, and I've got a question that still hasn't been answered, we call it a pending question. Okay. Uh, can we agree that you'll answer that question before we take the break? Yeah, I'll answer that yeah. pending question. Yeah. Otherwise, someone might say that you've got the answer for somebody else while we're on the break. Okay, yeah, sure. I can yeah, answer that. So that wouldn't be fair to you. No, would it wouldn't be. No. It would not be fair, and I don't want to put you in that position okay, so that someone can make that allegation against you. All right, sir, do you have any questions about the deposition itself, what we're going to do today, uh, or your involvement in the deposition? Uh, no, I guess I can just ask questions if I just don't understand. At any time. Okay. At any time you have a question, please ask me. Uh, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's take a moment now and talk about uh, you and about um, your involvement uh, in the accident that happened outside the University Center around two years ago, okay? Okay. So. Now, at the time the accident happened, you were 17 years old? Uh, yes, I was. Okay, so you're about 19, 20 now? Yeah, 19. I can't return 20. Getting ready to turn 20. And your name is Johnny Broadsides? Yes, that's correct. And Johnny, do you live uh, in the area over by the University Community Center? Uh, yes, I'm going to say that far. Okay, you don't community say that far then. Um, what were you doing there that night? Uh, well, at the night of the Community Center, I actually had gone off of work um, early, or actually gone off because I worked the night shift over at, uh, over at the plant. So mm -hmm. um, that night I was actually shooting some basketball with some of my friends. We'd been hanging out earlier that day in that area. And uh, we were just shooting basketball um, really late into the night. Late into the night. That's something you like to do? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. What was the first thing that occurred that was out of the ordinary? I remember playing basketball with everybody, and then I just heard this 
thud and this horrible screaming sound. It sounded like these kids were, were crying out. So we stopped playing, we looked over, and I, I saw these, uh, these cars that were stopped over in the middle of the road, and it just stood out to me. So I ran over to see what was going on. Okay. How many cars did you see? I remember seeing two cars. There was a Toyota, and there was a... Um, I believe there was a, a Honda that was there as well. A Toyota and a Honda. Yes, I believe so. So there were so there were two different uh, makes of cars. Now, how, how were you able to tell the difference between the Toyota and the Honda? Uh, well, I mean, I've seen those type of cars before. I've been able to recognize the symbols that are on them. And I could easily tell that one was a Toyota and one was a Honda. Well, at the time, you're a seventeen-year-old guy, right? Oh uh, yes. Most seventeen-year-old guys like cars, don't they? Oh uh, yeah. And uh, and and there's a big difference between a. Uh, an economy Toyota and a Honda. Oh uh, yes, there definitely is. Um, and you saw both there. Yeah, I saw them both there. And are you sure you saw both there? Uh, yes, definitely. Now, which direction were they facing? Were they facing north, like they were going up the street, or were they facing south, like they were going down the street? I believe they were both facing north. Both there. facing north. So when you ran over uh, to the Honda, what happened? Well, I ran over to the Honda first. And I looked inside, and um, I saw these kids that were laying around, so I, I, I got upset. So I went over to the Honda, and I was banging on the window and telling the person to get out of the car. And um, it, I guess there was a woman that was inside the car, mm -hmm. and she, she peeled off. She got out of there in a heartbeat, and she almost ran over my foot when she was leaving, too. And this is a lady in the Honda? Yes, it was. Now, there, there was a Toyota there, too? Yes, there was a Toyota. What did you do um, after the Honda peeled out? Well, after the Honda peeled out, I went over to where the Toyota was, and I pretty much did the same thing. I was trying to see what was going on, and uh, they ended up getting out of there, too, as well. Okay. Did you see who was driving the Toyota? Uh, the Toyota, I think, was also driven by a woman. Okay. Was that, did that Toyota have a, a cracked windshield? Uh, yes, it did. Okay. Now, was the Toyota to the left or to the right of the Honda? I can't really remember right now on top of my head, but you I want to say it's I want to say it's probably more off to the left side. Off to the left side, but you're not sure. You I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, don't know for certain. Okay. Why were you beating on those cars? What were you trying to do? I was trying to figure out what was going on. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, our neighborhood isn't the best neighborhood in the world, but we have to look out for our own. And mm -hmm. I ran over there and I saw these kids laying down on the ground. I, I got furious and wanted to see what was going on. That's why I ran over to those cars. Now, there's a cell phone video from that night. Did you take that cell phone video or did someone else take it? I think someone else took it. Someone else took it. I just want to make certain that you were not the one who took that video. Now, where were the children on the ground? I remember seeing um, one of the children was laying down in front of where the uh, where the Toyota was was on the side, and I remember I remember seeing this baby that was laying down on the ground. It's an image I still can't get out of my head. And the baby was also laying down in front of where the car was. Okay, now was this where the Toyota was? Toyota, or Toyota, or where the Honda was. Where the Toyota was. Where the Toyota was. Okay. Now I notice in your statement you indicate that you were you were angry about yes. those folks being there. Absolutely. Why is that? Well, because. Certain people don't belong in our neighborhood. I mean, I understand that I'm not allowed to go in certain neighborhoods, and it just goes the same way. They shouldn't be able to come in our neighborhood either. Now, when you say certain people, what do you mean by that? I mean, you know, certain people just don't belong in our, in our neighborhood. You know, we're a predominantly black neighborhood, and that's the way it should always be. We should just be with our own selves. I understand that different groups and different people want to come in there, and I mean, that's fine, but at certain times of night, they don't belong in there. Were the folks who were in the Toyota and the Honda white people, or could you tell? They were white people. They were white? They were white people. Uh, is there any chance that they were Hispanic? Um, not, that I can, not that I can tell. I mean, they didn't look Hispanic. Thank you. I, I don't think I have any more questions for you right now, Mr. Ross. Okay. All right. I'd like to thank C.C. Demps, a former trial team member and all-around great student at Stetson College of Law, for his performance as Johnny Broadsides. I'd also like to st thank Stanley Arthur, our media production guy, and what I think of as the artistic guru at Stetson University, and of course, Stetson University College of Law. We are uh, an advocacy-based school, and this is just a small sample of the type of things that are possible when you focus on advocacy as an actual discipline in the academic context. Till next time, I'm Charlie Rose. Look forward to seeing you down the road. Uh, good luck and good advocacy training.